めて捨てたバトンふざけるなブルマトランクスブラーキャベトの約束サイヤ人としての誇り俺の全て俺は貴様とは違う捨ててたまるかこの試合は第6宇宙と第7宇宙の破壊神が Welcome back to another animation breakdown. We are so close to the end of Super now. It's kind of hard to believe. After a few shaky weeks as far as animation goes, last week brought us back around to the good stuff with fan favorite Shuichiro Manabe making a brief appearance to round things off. This week, we're continuing the trend of well animated episodes. And while the high points aren't quite as high as what Manabe brought us last week, the overall average is significantly higher thanks to a nice array of talented animators. Not too surprising considering Ashima Solo. Last week, but worth keeping in mind all the same. The first half comes was supervised by Sutomo Ono, who, despite being on the series since episode 60, has been a bit of a mystery with two animators on his team that were familiar to me, Taichiro Ohara and Shin Young Soon, not taking part in this episode. Thankfully, that's not quite the end of the world as far as this episode goes. Miyako Suji, the chief animation supervisor, is all over this episode, correcting huge chunks of artwork, and I have to say, I'm seriously impressed by her output here. The edge to her drawings that seem to be missing from previous episodes is back, and it's doing wonders for Vegeta in this episode. It's maybe not quite as good as some of my favorite Vegeta shots of her from the future Trunks arc, but I'd be lying if I said I wasn't all about what she's doing this week. A great show. From her, that means I don't have to rack my brains trying to work out what the other supervisor, Yasuhiro Namatame, looks like either. Onto the animation, then, this first half is a little bit inconsistent. It opens up with Topo vs. 17, which is reasonably well done. There's a great sequence of 17 running away from Topo's blasts, which I think might be my favorite cut in the episode. It's got some absolutely gorgeous effects work, and I think what's sort of bittersweet about it is that Toei's compositing team forgot to blur one plume of smoke, so the lovely detail. Effects are on full display for a split second, comparing it to the other shots that weren't quite so lucky to escape the blur, and I'm sure you can see why I'm so against the practice. It really destroys the detail, and you'll see this with one scene in the second half, especially. While that scene was great in spite of that, I can't say the same for what follows. There's a lengthy period of action here that's really poorly done. Topo firing his blasts is really just a still with some screen shake added, and when you stabilize the shot, you can see it's a pretty big corner cut. I'd normally wave this away because it's pretty inconsequential on the whole, but it really is extensive. It carries right through to where Frieza chimes in with the same thing. When combined with the reused scenes and the digital effects work, it's an unfortunate blemish. In the middle of this quality sandwich. And I call it that because right afterwards, the effects god Kenji Miyuma's turn rolls around as he animates the tail end of this section, leading into Goku and Vegeta vs. Jiren. I really can't understate just how beautiful his smoke is. Effects work often goes undervalued in anime, but interesting shapes and dynamic smoke behavior isn't easy to animate, but he does so effortlessly. I love this section where the beam is whipping against the smoke. It's not super complex, but it feels really premium thanks to those great shapes. Shapes. Moving on, Goku and Vegeta against Jiren is yet another example of what I spoke about last week with Nikaido's contribution. Looped or limited animation is not bad animation, it's entirely down to how it's executed, and I think Miyuma's done a wonderful job here. Although it's looped and although it's not animated with many frames, you get this feeling that the two characters are stylishly rotating around Jiren thanks to the way he poses and moves the characters between each frame. It's very effective conservative animation, and with little moments, Like Jiren throwing his beam, breaking up the loop, it comes together nicely without making the limited approach stand out in any meaningful way. Again, it's like I said with Nikaido last week, and again with Shida's work back in 110 and 95. It can be frustrating when good animators don't have the time to deliver scenes with stacks of movement, but their abilities will always allow them to excel over others regardless. That might sound obvious, good animators are always better than mediocre animators, but I've seen unfortunate trends of people devaluing. 
doing strong limited work because they know they're capable of doing better. That might be the case, but a scene being limited doesn't make it bad, in the same way a scene with lots of movement isn't always competently executed over a limited approach. I think the anime handshakers shall prove that one for us, and if you value your eyes, I'd suggest avoiding it. Anyway, with that tangent out of the way, I want to touch on the storyboarding in this episode. The first half's board comes to us from Yoshitaka Yoshima. If you've been watching my videos for a while now, you'll know that I'm usually a big fan of Yoshima's storyboards. They're typically filled with interesting angles and do a nice job of showcasing scale. Unfortunately, that's not quite the case with his board in this first half. It's a little bit flat and the action isn't framed in particularly interesting ways either. It feels really small and by the numbers, which is so unusual for him. Although boards are done well in advance of episode animation, I can only imagine his episode was probably knocked a little bit out of whack by this coming so soon after his own episode, especially considering just how many boards he's done lately. The second half's board, however, is pretty damn fantastic, and it comes from Tadayoshi Yamamuro. I have to say, I'm really surprised and impressed by what he's come up with here. We all know my thoughts on Resurrection F's very amateur and flat storyboarding, which is of course his first foray into that field. His board for the Future Trunks arc special was a significant improvement, but with it being so heavily referenced from the manga, it was hard to really say whether he'd improved in any meaningful way. This definitely confirms it though, this is one dynamic board that bests Yoshima's efforts in pretty much every way. He's got some very creative angles going on here and the scale is definitely realised very nicely. I do think there are areas where he falls back on flat compositions and I'd be lying if I said this wasn't a significant step up over anything he's shown us before. I'm now quite curious to see how he evolves in this role in the future. Was this a bit of luck or is he actively learning? It'd be interesting to see him transition from an animation to a directorial one permanently. Back to the animation, the second half kicks off with Vegeta vs Topper, which I think may come from Jin in Naba. The guess is based entirely on process of elimination, as you'll soon see. It's several minutes long, Inaba's top credited key animator on this episode, and the rest of the scenes seem pretty easy to identify, so I can't imagine Imagine who else this would have come from if not him. Just a guess, but there you go. At the end of his scene, it looks like Chi Young Sir takes over as Vegeta punches Toppo into the rocks. You can see Chi's smoke effects, which look pretty much identical to his scene in 122. It's a great little cut, actually. There's a good chunk of well executed movement with some neat smears and a nice bit of the on model character art we've come to expect from him. There's a lot of on model work scattered sporadically throughout this episode, actually, so I do think Yamamura played a part in tidying things up. Particularly since Namatame, the supervisor of this episode, hasn't demonstrated a very strong ability on his work on the series so far. Next up, as Vegeta starts up his suicide but not suicide attack, Kenta Yokoya steps in. Yokoya is a superstar freelance animator with big ties to Studio Bones. We last saw him do a very tiny scene at the end of episode 116 thanks to Kenotsuka. Now he's back, presumably of his own volition, doing a very similar scene. It's pretty limited and effects based but showcases his trademark debris and smoke. Unfortunately, it's also the scene that suffers the most thanks to the overzealous blurring I mentioned earlier. Instead of us in enjoying the lovely shapes that fans of his work are used to, we're left with a bit of an incomprehensible smeary mess. It has the impact the scene needs, but as far as respecting the effort put into the drawings, it's pretty depressing. But that's about it as far as noteworthy animation goes. This was a bit of a strange episode for me. It was written by Ayumu Hisao, who's a pretty horrible Dragon Ball writer. He last handled episode 119, which if you remember was the very disconnected one just after Universe 6 was erased. I think this suffered similar issues actually. After Frieza hit the deck last week, having him pop back up again for a split second was very strange. And again, with how few opponents are left, it's bizarre that this is being written so episodically. In spite of the animation this week being pretty satisfactory, I will say that I'm still not 100% optimistic about the state of the production at the moment. This episode was still filled with a good chunk of bank animation, from the recap after the recap to the final flash from last week, and of course the overly lengthy flashback of Vegeta's sacrifice. These are all ways of saving time, and many of them are clearly not there by choice. I do feel like we're on the up part of the curve now, so I expect the episodes to get stronger and stronger from here on out, but it's probably not going to be smooth sailing. I just hope this all makes some sort of sense by the time Super ends. But that's it from me for now, let me know down below how you felt about today's episode, and this time I'd like to hear about your thoughts in terms of story too. I know this episode has been pretty divisive, so I'm curious to hear where you guys stand on it. As always, be sure to rate the video, subscribe if you're new, and I will see you next time.